What's up guys? It's uh, PowerGuy1030. So I had a subscriber, Alfox94 I believe, I'm sorry if I'm not saying it right. Um, he requested a while back that I make a video about uh, my home lab and uh, just getting some help on setting one up. So this is mine. Um, it's in this, move back a little bit so you can see this. It's just in this uh, shed right here. And sorry if I'm shaking a little bit and the video quality is pretty bad. It's my eye touch and I don't know how well the camera is on it. So I'm going to open the door and prop it open with something. So you could pretty much use any room in your house or um, maybe even like what I have, a shed on, on the side of your house. Or just a space that you could, if you have enough space, you can set th something up like this. Um, you don't need this much room, ah, this much room, because um, this is actually quite a bit. Um, so, in this corner, um, there's not really that much interesting stuff. Um, you're going to need some workspace for, um, like, doing experiments or building a shell, just stuff like that. Um, and. Yeah, that's just, uh, you're going to need something to hold all your compositions and chemicals in. Which, this is where I hold my compositions. And, uh, there is some books over there. Um, and, uh, just info. Just, um, for, uh, compositions and diagrams and just information on a bunch of stuff. I, I would recommend you have all the, um... I believe MSDS, I think it's Material Safety Data Sheets on all the chemicals that you have stored in your lab, which I actually do. I think most of them, some of them I don't because I couldn't find any of, um, of, of them on. But um, here are the chemicals that I made that I have synthesized, except for sodium hydroxide. And then most of these ones are ones that I have uh, bought. So I have quite a bit of chemicals, there's some back there, and then I have more stored under here um, so you're going to need some place to store your chemicals and compositions in um, there's some potassium nitrate, sulfur and aluminum um, and right now I guess I'm just going to say uh, the main chemicals that you'll be using the most if you're into uh, uh, going to be um, doing like uh, pyrotechnics um, so I'd say uh, potassium nitrate when you first start because you're going to be making black powder and most likely compositions for stars that um, include ch like charcoal, like tiger tail, um, or uh, yeah, ma mainly tr tr like charcoal based um, stars. And then aluminum, that would be a pretty good idea to get some, and, and some titanium, which I don't have any right now, I haven't made any. But I have a whole bunch of electrodes that I'm ready to grind up. So these are all chemicals, these are the ones I have stored. And you're going to need some place, obviously, to store these. So you're going to need a scale, which I have right here. Mine's actually pretty nice. Um, it has, uh, yeah. <clears throat> and here, this is not needed, but it, it helps uh, quite a bit if you have some skills with wood, which I kind of do. So mine's okay, but not really that great. Um, and this is a star drying chamber. Um, here I have screens that slide in. And I have a light. This one is too much watts and will definitely like burn up your stars if you leave it in, in for too long. So I recommend like a 50 watt to maybe 100 watt. Probably not that high. Um, but what this does is it provides heat for your stars to dry and uh, and light. And then over here in the corner, you don't need this. I would definitely recommend this though. I have a fan and uh, it's just a computer fan. And I have installed it with a switch, and that pretty much just plugs into the wall. And same thing with the light. But what this does is it drags or pulls the humidity out. Um, so I'm not getting my stars all hot, but then leaving them to sit in their own moisture. Um, so yeah, there we have that. And then you were Alfox94. Um, you were wondering about the uh, glassware and what you actually will be using versus what you won't even need. Um... And this is all the stuff I use daily. Um, I use some other glassware um, that's more complex that you won't need at all. Um, that I won't mention because it's not worth it. 
all this stuff is just the standard laboratory glassware that you're going to be using to synthesize most chemicals. Um, but I have a burner here that's going to be needed and a stand with some uh, clamps which you, I guess you could improvise on the stand if you're really cheap but um, I would definitely go with that and these. Um, now you're going to need uh, the beaker. Uh, the, the most that I use is about six, 600 milliliters. Um, you could go up to 1000. That would probably be a good idea. Um, depending on what scale you're going to be doing chemistry on. And this is a 100 milliliter beaker, which is uh, usually the lowest I will go for synth synthesizing chemicals that I use. Um, so that's with the beakers um, and, and the size that I do chemistry on. Um, Erlenmeyer flask, that's pretty much needed. Um, yeah. Beakers, obviously. And uh, let's see, I'm trying to see through the camera screen right now. Um, we have a test tube. Um, I would recommend getting a lot of these. You can get them at UN for pretty cheap. You get like 12. This is a standard test tube. You can get a smaller version, which is I think like almost half, and then a larger version, which is pretty big. I, I don't know. I haven't bought them. I just you get the standard because that's the uh, best size for me. Um, but yeah, test tubes for uh, just um, like uh, heating up something that's a small amount or just doing a small sta small scale chemistry on or just giving an example just something small because obviously test tubes are a lot smaller um, this is a glass stir rod I definitely recommend these because um, you can't use uh, metal or other ma most other materials if you're dealing with acids and you need to stir something um, and here's a watch glass this is great for um, heating something up like a liquid or letting something dry because it has a very large um, area where air can get in around it versus beakers work also but if I were to try to dry something in this it would definitely take longer um, and here's a boiling flask this is a flat bottom um, you can get round ones um, I prefer these because I I just like setting them down and uh, I don't like the hassle of having to have little ring things to set them into but um, you could get a round bottom one um, if you want but I mostly use these um, and these are great for boiling it provides a uh, equal amount of flame to all of the uh, surface so you're not gonna have one side boiling more than the other or heating up um, so yeah so as for the tour there's not really much to see you can all see it pretty much in one here's some diagrams elements um, books as I described before you're definitely definitely gonna need a fire extinguisher that's a uh, definitely needed um, ball mill that's another very good thing if you're gonna be doing black powder um, similar um, you're gonna need some source of like uh, heat or something I have a propane torch there in the back um, won't pull it out because don't want to go all the way back there, but yeah, you're going to need one of these. This I just pack, uh, picked up at the uh, local uh, camping store. Um, and it's just a pocket rocket attached to one of these butane slash isopropyl, um, isopropyl uh, like fuel tanks. They're pretty small, but they're pretty cheap too. Um, so yeah, that's about all you would need and the rest of this. It's just storage for there's screens, more glassware that that's not really needed, and more beakers and flasks. And then I have um, some ram rammers um, and dowels and hemis and containers. It says ignition, but it's really just containers. You're definitely uh, I forgot to mention that uh, once you start making a lot of chemicals, you're gonna end up with uh, more chemicals than you have containers if you don't start buying them. So. I buy mine from United Nuclear. They're pretty cheap um, and they're nice because they're you can get very large ones such as uh, this one. This isn't very large. This is just me. Uh, nah, I don't know why I said that. This is just a bunch of copper sulfate um, that I didn't buy or I didn't huh, I didn't make. I just got it and put it in here just because I don't like it um, in the container that it was before. But yeah, I definitely recommend getting containers from UN because they look nice and pretty durable and you can get them um, for pretty cheap um, so yeah 
that's pretty much it. Um, so if I missed anything, um, just leave a comment, and I'll try to uh, explain that maybe in a video or send you a message. Um, if you guys want to see more, um, let me know. If you guys like this video, please uh, leave a like. If you didn't like it, leave a dislike, and please tell me why uh, it was a bad video, and I will uh, try to improve on that. Um, so thank you guys for watching. Um, if you want to, you can hit subscribe, and that would be great. So thank you guys for watching.